Hey, you. That's my silver side. No charge for looking, eh, Jet? That's right, dude. Where's your crew? They should have been drifting into town for the past week. We'll hit all the saloons and round them up. How long you been here? I just rode in. Can someone get my luggage, please? Yes, ma'am. I'll get it myself. Thank you. So this is Colton, huh? Wonder where a man can find some excitement. You get your belly full of excitement. When all your men at Sam Allen's stable come sun up tomorrow, and I want you all sober. All right. Let's hit all the saloons and dig them out. Now I got some personal business to do. Yeah? Well, so have I. Starts with some whiskey. If you're old enough, you'll know what goes on from there. Easy. Don't stampede the livestock. Got him in one throw. Let's get him back in his corral. Thank you. I thought I'd lost him for good. Colton's a pretty rough town for a lone canary to be loose in. Someone meeting you? Yes, thanks. Miss Austin? Yes. Get her gear, kid. I'm expecting Major Cosgrave. I'm Cal Prince, the foreman out at the Circle C Ranch. The Major's going to be detained in Denver until late tonight, and he asked me to see that you're settled at a hotel. Is this cowboy with you? No, but he's been very helpful. Thank you very much. Here's for helping the lady. Buy yourself a cigar. You keep it. Till you're old enough to smoke. What are you doing, looking for a fight? Take it easy, kid. You know the Major doesn't want any gunplay around Miss Austin. Get out. Get in the ring. Maybe you'd like to try it again sometime, when we haven't got an audience. Anytime you say. I mean, the second show might be a lot funnier. It'd be a shame if nobody sees it. Go on. Sure worst off that hunk of rock since I was in town last. Watch this. I ain't missed it but twice in the seven years that thing's been here. It's easy to spit on a dead man. Hold on now, stranger. I'll admit I'd a whole lot rather spit on the colonel's brother, Major Linton Cosgrave. He's the feller that had that thing put there. What you got against the Major? When the old man was alive, us Polsons run cows in the Newmark Valley along with the Circle C outfit. We both leased grass off of Hal Newmark. He's a feller that owned it. Then the old man died and left everything to his brother. Well, the Major hired him a crew of gun hands and run all the Polson cows out of the valley. Nobody yet knows what happened to Hal Newmark. He just disappeared. You ask what I got against the Major. Sounds like the Polsons did all right when the Colonel had the Circle C. Yeah, I reckon we did. You've been spitting on the wrong man, Boone Polson. You know my name? Do I know you? You'll get to know me.
Just one moment, sir. A hot brand and a cold one, without even a blur. You got a good aim with that right. Well, I used to aim for the jaw. I was a bare knuckle prize fighter once. Knocked off Dr. Davis. I know, in the 26th round. Wish I'd been old enough to be there, Sam. Jet! It's good to see you, boy. Man, I ought to say. It's good to see you, Sam. These are my saddles? With rifles and scabbards, just like you said in the letter. Out in the corral, I got the horses for you. Good top mounts, just like you said. But say, Jed, how come you want nine horses but just eight saddles? One well, of my hired hands brought his own. Fancy silver outfit. Best friend left it to him. Oh. How much do I owe you? Nothing. Fact is, you sent me $55 too much. Hang on to it. Look at them horses first. Make sure you're satisfied. I'll be satisfied if you are. Say, you didn't tell anybody who won the horses and saddles, did you? Not a soul. They'll find out soon enough. Horses? Saddles? Your own hired hands? You figure on running a ranch around here, Jed? Well, either run a ranch or run it clean out of business. The Major? That's right, the Major. See, most of these brands you're making seem to be Circle C. Well, Circle C's got most of the cattle. The Major don't have much competition these days. He has now. I want you to make up some irons for me, Sam. Well, sure thing. What brand? The Target brand. Like that. That brand will make trouble, son. I plan to make a lot of trouble for the Major. I'm taking over the Newmark Valley with that brand. Too bad old Hal Newmark can't be around to see how it works. Been seven years now since anybody heard anything from Mr. Newmark. That doesn't make sense, Sam. A, a man doesn't just disappear, up and leave a valuable range like the Newmark Valley. But there's some folks that thinks maybe the Major killed him, because he wouldn't sell out. What else is there to think? I'll see you sent up, Sam. Say, can you have a half a dozen of those Target brands ready for me? Sure thing. I got a hungry horse out here. I'll take care of him. And Jet? Son, I've told you since you're a little boy, and you pap it before you. I want you to know if there's going to be a fight, I'll help any way I can. Thanks, Sam. This one's my fight. <laughs> Remember me? I remember a boy. He was only 15 years old at the time. He stood over his father's grave and he swore he'd come back here someday and kill a man. His own uncle. You not only remember, you know why I'm here. I want the Circle C. Eight years now. I thought the boy had changed. Don't make a mistake that's sure to put you on the gallows, Jet. Uh, come on, let's sit down and talk this over. I'll sit down if you have something new to tell me about my rice to the ranch. You know your rice, Jet. Your uncle must pay you 10% of the Circus C's net income. I won't settle for less than 100, but I'll take 10% on account. Where is it? At the Colton Bank. We tried to trace you down. When we couldn't locate you, I advised the Major to deposit 10% to your name. Everything is in order, Jet. The Major following your father's will to the letter. Except it isn't my father's will. I don't understand that. 
My father told me when I was 21, I'd get the ranch. If the will says anything other than that, it's forged. That's a serious accusation. Can you prove that? No. I'm afraid there's no legal way for you to get the circle I thought you'd say that. A lawyer's opinion. But I'm no lawyer. If I can't find a legal way, I'll find an illegal way. Like the Major did. I'd like to get a room. Mrs. Banner around? In the parlor, she's trying to make a lady a quality out of a Paulson. <laughs> Judy. That's all right. Miss Austin's probably heard enough of this anyway. Oh, not at all. You're playing beautifully. Thank you. Sorry to keep you waiting, stranger. I'm no stranger, Mrs. Banner. Why, Jet! My, my, my. I'd like a room in a hurry, please. Sure, Jet. You've been away a long time. Mrs. Banner. Yes? Do you have an upstairs room over the alley where I won't make a target? <laughs> Sounds like somebody was trying to kill you. <laughs> you will be. Who? My uncle. Now, Jeff, don't oppose him. The Major not only runs the Circle C, he just about runs this town as well. Including the sheriff? We've had six sheriffs in the past two years. The last one turned in his badge over a week ago. We can't find anybody that wants to take his place. Well, the Citizens Committee's trying to raise a fund to import a professional lawman. I bet that's a fund the Major won't contribute a dime to. Thank you. Morning. We met at the stage depot. Then you know him? No, not by name. It's a small world, Miss Austin. We haven't been properly introduced. I'm Alice Austin. I'm Jet Cosgrave. I know. I just stole a most improper glance at the hotel register. Come in. Thank you. Afraid of me? <laughs> Sorry. I hope you don't mind if I sit down. Oh, it's quite proper, seeing as we're about to be related. <laughs> I just love the look on your face. You haven't the slightest idea of why I'm here. As a matter of fact, right now you're wondering if you shouldn't tell this woman to get out of your room. That thought never occurred to me. <laughs> I won't tease you any further, Jed. I'm out here from Virginia to marry your uncle. It's obvious he hasn't told you about me. My uncle and I haven't seen each other in eight years. He said you didn't get along, but 
I'd hoped you'd settled your differences. In fact, I hope you're out here to be best man at our wedding. I am out here to be best man. But not at a wedding. I came out here to fight the Major. He didn't tell me that. Did he tell you he swindled me out of the Circle C? He warned me about you, Jet. He said you were always wild and reckless. That's why your father left the ranch to his brother instead of to his son. And of course, you believe the Major. Why should I believe you? I refuse to listen to this kind of talk about the man I'm going to marry. Goodbye, Mr. Cosgrave. Take my advice. Go back to Virginia. Find yourself another man. Do you think a woman only has to turn her head and she's found another man? A woman like you doesn't have to turn her head. Thanks for proving how right the Major was in everything he said about you. That shot should prove how right I was about the Major. Drop it, Cosgrave. No chance to get you with the shade pulled down, so I figured a shot might draw you out. Aren't you kind of big to be playing games with kids? You dropped your gun, Cosgrave. Now pick it up. Your gun's pointing at me. We ain't pointing any guns at him, are we, Bert? No, it's just the other way around. We just happened to walk into this alley and Cosgrave pulled a gun on us. We had to kill him in self-defense. The Major even told you how to do it. The Major didn't tell us a thing. This is my idea. The idea didn't work. Look behind you. You think we're going to fall for that one? You'd better fall for it. If you let this kid keep playing with firearms, he's going to get himself hurt. Now get out of here, both of you. Go on, get out of here. You sure happened along at the right time. I didn't just happen along. Heard a shot in the alley, and I thought some of the Circle C men were trying to bushwhack my brother. Say, what's the fight about? If you don't know, what made you take my side? I'd take anybody's side if he had Circle C riders against him. I'm a Polson. Why, sure. You're Judy Polson. That's right. Say, so you look kind of familiar, too. I'm Jet Cosgrave. If my pa knew I'd saved a Cosgrave, he'd take a whip to me. Now, wait a minute. Not when he finds out I'm on his side. A Cosgrave. You still got those freckles on your back? How do you know? What are you talking about? I'll tell you sometime. Here's the champagne, Miss Austin. A blanc, vintage 46. Glasses for two, just like the gentleman ordered. What gentleman? The one you plan to marry. Lynn! <laughs> you look even more beautiful than I remembered. I wanted to be here when you arrived, but business and dinner. Oh, don't worry about it. You're here now. Major. Yes? I, uh, I think I ought to tell you that your nephew's staying here. Here in the hotel? 
I don't understand him at all, Lynn. Today, somebody tried to shoot him, and he blamed you for it. I didn't even know he was in town. I told you he was a troublemaker, Alice. Oh, I hope there won't be any trouble in the hotel. I'll see to it that there isn't. Certainly not during Miss Austin's stay here. How would you like to drive out in the morning and take a look at your future home? Oh, I'd love it, Lynn. Anything else, Mrs. Banner? Uh, no, nothing. And uh, congratulations. She's a lovely girl. You were in town, Jet. Glad to see you. Welcome home. You're not glad to see me. And right now, this isn't my home. Let's forget our differences, Jet. You want me to send him on his way? No. Take Miss Austin on in and leave your horse here with me. Bye, Aunt Alice. I hope you like my ranch. I'll be right along. Get going, Cal. Yeah. Bought me a new gun, Cosgrave. It's real pretty, too. Don't let some nasty little boy take it away from you. That's enough of that kid on your way. Yes, sir. Understand you had trouble with some of my riders. They play pretty rough. I hired some men myself. They play even rougher. Why do you need them? You have no ranch. I will have. I'll have this one. Starting when? I've already started. I'm going to be your neighbor. I'm moving into the Newmark Valley with my own brand, the Target. You won't stay there very long, Jet. You have no rights to Newmark. Neither do you. On the contrary, Al Newmark's left Colorado. I'm taking care of the valley for him until he returns. He won't return unless it's from the dead and you know it. In that case, I'll be holding in Newmark quite a while. My lawyer refers to it as squatter's rights. Tell your lawyer that Newmark has a new squatter with enough guns to keep trespassers out. And that means you, Major. All right, Jet. If it's a fight you want, you picked yourself a pretty big opponent. The bigger the tree, the louder the crash. It's just beautiful. Just beautiful. Sure glad you like it. I hope that scene with Jed didn't upset you. <laughs> of course not. I'm afraid he hasn't changed much. Still wild and reckless. A black sheep. Perhaps he's just young. That lady from Virginia sure changed the major. Wait till after the wedding, and he'll get his same old even disposition back. Always mad. He's gone. Come on. Major's men, they've got one hour to get out of the valley. I'll be back by then. Might be Paulson's. Are you new hands? Yeah, brand new. I'm Toby McDonald, the best darn cook the Circle C ever had. Light down. Anybody else around? No, they're all out working. That your horse? 
Hey, but why do you ask? Get on it and get out. Cal Prince didn't say anything about me getting out. Who's Cal Prince? Saddle bus for Major Cosgrave, of course. I'm saddle bot for Jet Cosgrave. You've got exactly one minute to ride out a gun ring. Jet Cosgrave? Jet, that name doesn't mean anything to me. And the Major don't mean nothing to us. You want to ride that horse straight up or belly down? Hey, mind if I get my gear? Go ahead. Get down, boys. Make yourself at home. You didn't have to shoot him in the back. Shoot him in the back? What are you talking about? The fellow went for a gun. I've got eight witnesses to prove it. Or maybe I've only got seven. How about it, Curly? No, no, Duty. You have eight. Jet Cosgrave hired us to stir up a war with his uncle. And the sooner we start up, the sooner we get paid. Get his horse. We'll tie this cowpoke belly down across his saddle. Hit the iron, Curly. We'll send him back to the Major wearing the target brand. Stay right here, sweetheart. I'll be back. I left him alone at the line camp. Take him into the bunkhouse, boys. Look at there, Major. Did you ever see that target brand before? Only today. This is Jet Cosgrave's signature. Go get him, Prince. Drop everything else, but bring him back here. Belly down, like Toby. I don't want Jet killed until after my marriage to Miss Austin. I told you once before, it might scare off. I'll see her back to town. Come on. A warning. Next Paulson you meet's apt to shoot a lot closer. Do me a favor, Judy. Right ahead and tell Chad I'm on my way in to see him. I'm busy. Do it yourself. You will. What makes you so sure? Because you want to find out how come I know you got freckles on your back. Chad. I ain't been much worried. Howdy, Boone. Rest your guns, boys. Say what you got on your mind to say, and then get. All right. Short and to the point. The Circle C is rightfully mine. I'm either going to take it from the Major or get killed trying. 
Well, I ought to be glad. At last, two Cosgraves are at each other's throats. But I don't know as I am. I've had plenty of time to learn to hate, and mostly what I hate's a Cosgrave. You had no reason to hate my father. The Major's the one that's giving you all the trouble. Then what do you got to offer us poor Polsons? The same agreement you had with my father. You can move your cattle back to the new market anytime you want. The Major raises fancy blooded stock. He don't want them mixing with no Polson Hill cattle. That's the reason we got thrown out of the valley in the first place. He won't throw you out anymore. I'm throwing him out. You mean you bought the Newmark? Well, nobody can buy it until Hal Newmark shows up. I don't think he will. Then how'd you get the valley? Same way the Major did. I took it. I'm going to slap my brand on any cattle I find there. Except Polson cattle. I'll buy it. You want to move back? Well, you talk a good fight. How do I know it's anything more than just talk? Let your sons ride back to the line camp with me. How does this set with you boys? Well, we could sure use the grass. All right, then. Ride with them. I'm going, too. There's a little personal matter that's going to take some explaining. The Polsons. Well, it's a pleasure. They give you any trouble? No. There was only one Circle C rider on the place. I sent him home tied to his saddle with some lead for ballast. I want to talk to you. Did you have to kill him? You reached for a rifle. You were nine to one. It must have been tough. He ain't tough anymore. I told you I wanted a fair fight. You hired us to break the Circle C. What difference does it make how we do it as long as we win? Makes a lot of difference to me. You're going to tell me how to fight. As long as I'm paying the bills, you can bet your bottom dollar I'm going to tell you how to fight. Curly, come here. Yes, boss? You were here. Did Rankin give this Circle C rider a chance to get out? Well, the, the, the man reached for a rifle or anything else. Get your men mounted. Right back into the hills with the Polsons. Help them get the cattle down here. Then you can start slapping the target brand on every Circle C you can find in the valley. I'll stick with Curly. I wouldn't want him to be alone when the Major finds out you killed one of his men without giving him a chance. I got eight witnesses to prove I gave that fellow a chance. Eight liars. Get started, dude. Dude and the boys will give you a hand with your cows. Come on with us, Judy. Herding cows ain't for girls. Curly. Yeah, boss? I'm going down the creek to water the horse. If you get any trouble here, these shots will bring me running. OK.
Horace thirsty, Judy? I don't know. Ask him. You thirsty? Not thirsty. Must have been curiosity that brought you down here. And a woman in the world could wait to find out how come a man knows she's got freckles on her back. And how do you know so much about women? I've been around a little. You've been around all right. Around my house, snooping through windows. No windows on the creek, Judy. Still go swimming here? Windows or bushes? Either way, it's snooping. Wasn't snooping at all. I was a Comanche warrior, scouting for my tribe. When I came to the edge of those woods, there you were in the creek. First girl I ever saw like that. You shouldn't be talking about it. You look beautiful, Judy. With freckles on my back? They were beautiful freckles. Those days, everything was beautiful. It's still beautiful country, Judy. Yeah, I guess it is. It's just that I want to see other places, like Miss Bannett talks about. Have you been a lot of places, Jed? Mostly cow country. Hot, dry, and flat. Didn't have much time for the cities. Too busy saving every dollar I get my hands on to come home with. You know, you're even prettier than a girl I met in Dodge. Your folks are big cattle people. My folks are nothing but hill people. I suppose you think I'm ashamed of that. I didn't say that. They've been good to me. Why, sure they have. It's just that I want to be something more than just a hill girl all my life. Miss Ban is teaching me to be a lady of quality. Like Alice Austin? <laughs> I suppose you think nobody can make a lady out of a Polson. No, I didn't say that either. No, but you were thinking it. You want to know what I was really thinking? What? I don't suppose I'm the first girl you've kissed. But I don't care as long as I'm the last. I'm going too. No, you're not. My plans for you don't include getting a shot. He'll give up. Hey, who are they? I don't know. Should we fight it out? Those weren't my orders. Hey, Bert! You got here just in time, after it's all over. What happened? Your uncle's outfit hit the house when we was out after cattle. We heard the shooting and run him off. He didn't make it. Was your boss along? I said, was your boss along? The Major? No. He wanted you brought in for Toby's murder. The fight this fellow put up in the house, Prince thought you were in there. Get a rope, Weller. What for? For him. Forget it. If I want a man hung, I'll do the hanging. Now get on your horse and get out of here. You're gonna let that fellow just walk out of here. Get your hand off me, dude. I told you before, as long as I'm paying the bills, I'll give the orders. And I told you before, I don't like nobody giving me advice how to fight. I don't care if you like the advice or not, just as long as you take it. Oh. 
A man comes gunning for you and you side in with him instead of your friend. Dude, I have no friends. You and your men are in this for money. As long as I'm paying you, you'll do things my way. Where's Jet? We got run off, Major. Jet Cosgrave's got a bunch of hired gunslingers over there. We almost lost Bert. Yeah. That dude Rankin was gonna hang me. Who's dude Rankin? He's a hired gunslinger. I rode with him over in the Pecos. Shot his best friend one time for a silver-mounted saddle and $500. That's all, men. Uh, Prince. Do you think we might persuade this Rankin to sell out on Jet? If I know the guy, sure. All right. Offer him a bill of sale for every head of Circle C cattle he can round up by tomorrow night. He's got a big crew. Might run to three or four hundred head. It'll be worth it. And you tell him for me, if he's not off of my range by sundown tomorrow, the deal's off. And I'll hang him and every one of his bushwhackers personally. I'll sure tell him, Major. <laughs> we used when we was hiding out in the Pecos. But all of our bunch are either in the house or buried back on the Pecos. Except Steve. Steve Premis. Yeah, yeah. Sure glad you remembered that call. I don't like old friends to greet me with bullets. Steve. Hello, Hello Charlie. boy. You ain't changed a bit. Only a name. Out here, I'm Cal Prince. Cal Prince? That's the man riding for the Circle C. The fellow you chased out of here today, that was me. How could we know? We only saw you from a distance. Well, I'm sure glad you didn't see me any closer. A couple of your slugs almost took my ear off. Look, I feel like a target out here. Come on. What are you doing working for the Circle C out here? Same thing you're doing with Jet Cosgrave. Got my gun hired out. We hadn't ought to be hired out against each other, Steve. That's what I'm here for. How close you tied in with young Cosgrave? We ain't close at all. The only thing I like about him is his money. Look, dude, my boss has got a lot of good-blooded cattle. And he's ready to make you boys a deal. You got a drink in there? Sure. Couple of bottles. Ain't you gonna listen to the deal, Curly? Yeah. I listen. Pa. Shut your mouth, young'un. I'm going to whoop young Cosgrave, too. But not just now. Not so long as he helps us fight the Major. Turn it around, Zeke. But you should be whipped for what you think in your filthy mind. <laughs> if you hit me again, I'll shoot. Let her go. She's no daughter of mine. I tried to raise you up to be God-fearing, like your mother was. But I've failed. I'll have no wanton in this house. No guilt. <laughs>
Sam? Sam? Yes, ma'am? I got a message. You wanted to see me. Something about Judy Folsom. She rode in here a few minutes ago to put up her horse and fainted dead out the saddle. I think somebody's done took a whip to her. Judy, it's Mrs. Bannon. Her shirt stuck to the flesh in a couple places. Oh, will you bring me a pair of scissors, Sam, and get some hot water? Yes, ma'am. It's all right. No one's going to hurt you. I, I know. Oh. Oh. Who did this to you? Oh, my pa. I, I, I mean, my father. But why? I don't want to go back there. Maybe, maybe, maybe Sam will give me a job. I, I can rub down horses, and I, I'm, I'm as strong as half the men in town. Now, Judy, that's no good. Remember, if you want to be a lady, you can't start in a livery stable. Why did your father beat you? I, I don't sing anymore. Judy, why were you beaten? I don't want to go home. Miss Banner, let me work in the hotel. Oh, of course, honey, of course. I, I don't want to go home. Judy, why were you beaten? My father thinks I'm no good. But why, dear? Boone saw me kissing Judge Gosgrave. Oh, Miss Banner, you don't think like they do, do you? Of course not, honey. Judy, are you in love with him? Why else would I let him kiss me? Oh. I'll be back in a minute, dear. I'll take that, Sam. Go find Jet. Tell him I want to talk to him. Yes, ma'am. And hurry up, Sam. Judy, but it's all right to look at the pictures. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Hello, Judy. Evening, Jet. Mrs. Banner teaching you the hotel business? <laughs> exactly. Order yourself a drink, Jet. I'll be right with you. See you later, Judy. You can take care of these later, honey. Perhaps you'd better put some fresh linen in Miss Austin's room. Yes, ma'am. What did Sam tell you? Just that you wanted to see me. Judy had to run away from home. Her father took a whip to her. Why? You ought to know. Boone Polson saw you with his sister this afternoon and told. Look, all I did was kiss her. Can you take it so lightly? How else should I take it? Judy thinks you're in love with her. Now, wait a minute. I didn't say anything like that to her. Just what I suspected. Now, look, Jet. Judy's a nice girl. I'm not going to see any harm come to her. If you've no idea to marry her, then let her alone. Marry her? In return for a couple of kisses? I see. You don't think she's good enough for you, do you? You're just like the Major. You'd rather have some fancy woman for the East for a wife. That's right. A lady from Virginia. Miss Austin? I think I owe you an apology. Will you accept it over a glass of wine? Why not?
Champagne, please. Would it be awful if I ordered a beer? Two beers. Yes, sir. When are you going to call off this senseless feud and make up with your uncle? I'd rather make up with my aunt. The Major and I discussed you, Jet. He'd like to end your differences. In fact, he's more than willing to meet you halfway. That's what he told you. I don't understand you, Jet. You don't understand the Major. Keep the change. Thank you. I'm beginning to wonder why you asked me in here. I thought it was for an apology, but we seem to be right back where we started. My apology isn't for what I said. Meaning what? Meaning my advice to you is still the same. You've walked into a war. The Major's just waiting to get your name on a marriage certificate before he turns his hired killers loose on you. You're the wildest talking man I ever met. But I'm talking sense. I repeat my advice. Go back to Virginia. And leave the man who loves me? Or maybe you think the Major doesn't love me? I'm sure he does. In fact, I'd be surprised if he didn't. I wouldn't find it hard to fall in love with you myself. Is that the reason for your advice? Maybe. It's also because I don't like to see it tied to a man I came out here to break. If you want to be married to the owner of the Circle C, you've picked the wrong man. That's enough, Jet. All right, Anne Alice. After the wedding, don't throw the flowers away. You may need them for a funeral. just straightened up your room and fed your canary. Is there anything else? You know, I'm new here, and I don't want to make any mistakes. <laughs> I'm sure you won't. You're a very pretty girl, and you must be on your guard. I refer to certain male guests. Oh, I can take care of myself, Miss Austin. I hope so, Judy. Could you bring me some hot water for a bath? Yes, ma'am, right away. Cosgrave, because here we go. Ha! This is the first show, Cosgrave. Now let's see how you like the second act. And this time we got an audience. Here, get me that washcloth. We've got to get him out of here. Jet! Jet! How do you happen to come in your room, anyway? I don't know. 
I thought you were supposed to be the Major's girl. All right, we'll start with the front rooms first. Now watch yourselves. He's got a gun. They'll kill him. Well, what are you doing? I'll get rid of him, woman fashion. Uh, never mind, Miss Austin. He wouldn't be in there. That's Miss Austin. Look, story. I didn't ask you for the hotel register. You open it, Mrs. Banner. The major hears it and he'll kill you. You think I like the idea of the kid getting killed? Open it, Mrs. Banner. But the major will. Look, the first uh, time I saw her, she was mighty friendly with Jet Cosgrave. Uh, Naturally not. The Major's the man I'm going to marry. And Jeff's the man I'm going to marry. Really? Did he ask you? Well, not in so many words, but what would you think if a man kissed you and said he had plans for you? I think it might depend on the man. He's lucky. The bullet didn't go in, but look at this cut. He's lost a lot of blood. Turn down the covers, will you? He can't stay here all night. Don't worry. If he wasn't sick, I wouldn't let him. Not with you dressed in that peekaboo. Mm. Oh. Blacksmith. No gun. All right, you can put your hands down now. Just tell us where Jet Cosgrave is and you won't get hurt. I don't know where he is. He's a friend of yours, ain't he? That's why I don't know where he is. I used to make my living with my fist gun, boy. Where's Jet Cosgrave? I ain't seen him since last night. Wait a minute, Bert. Just heat that poker up a little bit more. Ever smell your own flesh burning? You better talk, Blacksmith. What's going on here, Prince? We're gonna make them tell us where Jet is. I don't know, Major. Men just don't go up in smoke. We've combed the whole town, searched every room in the hotel. Hotel? Did you disturb Miss Austin? Well, Miss Austin, sure didn't mean to. First, I give away my cattle to keep her from finding out what's going on, and you advertise it to her. What happened? Well, I, uh, we knocked on her door. You see, we had Miss Banner with us, and Alice, uh, Miss Austin was taking a bath, and we... You shouldn't have done that, Major. If Jet's not in town, he's either to Newmark or out looking for Dude Rankin. So go get him, but find him. And Prince, I'll see Miss Austin. And I'll tell her you're sorry for anything that happened at the hotel last night. The trouble I caused you last night ain't nothing compared to what I'll cause you if you ever take a swing at me again. I don't like your gun boys, Major. I'll be glad to see Jet get rid of them. What makes you so sure he will? I hear tell he's already made a pretty good start. I wouldn't advise you to clash again with the Prince Major. You need him as much as you need me. My advice to you, Devlin, is to mind your own business. Watch your temper. I'm not Prince. Judy put enough food on this tray for six men. I feel
feel like I've been fattened for Thanksgiving. She loves you. If you could have seen the look on her face last night holding that gun, she'll make a good wife. I don't know how to tell her, but I, I didn't exactly have marriage in mind. What did you have in mind? Well, the, the sun was shining and the stream was running and I kissed her. I don't remember any sun or any stream when you kissed me. What was the reason in my case? In your case, I didn't need a reason. Who is it? It's Julie. I get this lock fixed. Well, shirt's as good as new. How's the patient? Good enough to wear the shirt. Told you it was tough. Better get the room Miss Alice left in straightened up. Before Miss Banner finds out, I've been giving away the hotel's accommodations. Got Miss Austin in her room? Oh, uh, I, uh, uh, yes. I I'll tell her you're here. Never mind. I'll tell her myself. No, but, but she's not... Who is it? Linton, Alice. I'm not dressed. Well, can't you put on a robe? Please wait downstairs, Linton. Let me in, Alice. I've got to talk to you. Well, you're dressed. Too bad. Your man, Prince, had better luck last night. Notice the broken lock? He smashed in here while I was bathing. Now, please, please. I'll see to it that he's punished for his mistake. He didn't break in here by mistake. He was carrying out your orders to kill your nephew. Now, get out of here. I'm afraid you don't quite understand, Alice. I certainly don't. When I first met you in Virginia, you were a gentleman of honor. But out here, you're... I'm sorry. I have a bad temper. I always have had. Alice, you're just talking out of anger about last night. Hold it, Major. So Prince was right. You were hiding this killer. Killer? Judd had to fight to save his life. Ask him why he murdered one of my men last night. I don't care about your quarrel. I came out here to marry you. But after certain things I've seen, I'm not sure the whole thing isn't a mistake. I'm no different now than I was when you promised to marry me. That's what I'm beginning to fear. So you're turning me down for this. I'm sure the thought never entered Miss Austin's head. If she'd have me, I'd marry her right now. No! No! Kill me. 
a pulsing cow in the whole valley. Who do you reckon made off with him? The Major? More than likely Jet and them hired highbinders of his. That's what you get for making a deal with a Cosgrave. Get your horses. We're heading for the new mark. Where is dude? Where is everybody? I am the only body you got left, senor. The rest of the crew sold out to the mayor. For how much? For all the cattle, dude and the boys could round up. Mayor gave them a bill of sale. They took the pulse on the stack for good measure. They won't get them far. But you couldn't find them alone, boss. They can count the Poulsons in when they hear what happened to their cows. How about you, Curly? Yeah, I'm still here. Hmm? Hey, boss! Circle C! <laughs> Walking out innocent as a pair of lambs. You drove off our stock. You got just 10 seconds to tell us where. I didn't take your cows. Dude Rankin did. Rankin works for you. Not anymore. He sold out to the Major. They all sold out except Curly here. Paul. Cal Prince shot him. He's the only one that got away. Plenty of time to take care of Prince after we get her herd back. Lifer Town, Curly, get a doc. Too late for a doctor. This boy's a fixin' to die. Go ahead and get Judy out here. Judy's no daughter of mine. I don't want her here. She's his sister. Maybe he'd like her out here. Hey, where do you think you're going? After Dude Rankin. Boom, you and Zeke go with him. Don't let your eyes off of him. No Cosgrave's gonna rustle Polson's stock. I told you Rankin took your stock. I ain't taking the word of no Cosgrave. Get started.
Let's give the old ponies a breather before we go to this picnic. You know, they got us outnumbered. This ain't gonna be easy. We can even up the odds if we stampede the herd against the outriders. Man can't do much fighting if he's busy getting out of the way of running cattle. We're gonna be kind of busy, too, whenever we have to gather up that herd again by ourselves. They're heading for the water hole along the sinks. Those cows will smell water right now. Won't take too much to get them a running. They'll still be there when we want to pick them up. Well, come on, Cosgrave. Let's give them a fry. He's always a day late and a dollar short. Looks like old Boone's gonna be riding a silver-mounted saddle. Dude sure ain't gonna be needing it where he's going. Might as well have the whole outfit. Come on, let's go tell Paul we got our cattle back. Challenge Jet to a gunfight. Oh, you can't do that. Not yet. You got Miss Austin to think of. I've got the Circle C to think of. I can always find another woman. Suppose. Suppose Jet kills you. That's my worry. That's my worry, too. If you should die, the Circle C reverts to Jet by natural rights of inheritance. Where does that leave me? I'll tell you where that leaves you. You can forge another will. Now, wait. You listen to me. I've been your silent partner in the Circle C ever since the Colonel's death. Now I demand that you confirm that partnership in writing. Devlin, I'm not the least bit interested in your demands. Oh, perhaps Jet might. Don't cross me, Devlin. Mentally, you're sharp, but physically, you're a coward. It takes a man to cross me, not a rabbit. <laughs> I didn't need 
told you I'd kill you. inside. Who's with him? I don't know, the boss. The two ladies are with him. Where's our Paul? Oh, he went to get a wagon for Asa's body. He said one of you fellas should take a ride to town and see a minister about the funeral. Maybe you better take care of it, see? All right. Place, Major. So did you, Chet. Give me five minutes to get out of here. And I'll give you just five seconds to go for your gun. You better stay out of this, Curly. No, Chet. Please, let Judy's in there, Chet. She's seen enough of this bloodshed already. Her brother, Asa, is dead. That's the Major who killed him. Don't try to twist everything against me, Chet. Miss Austin wanted to come out here with Judy, so I came along with them. You're afraid to let Alice out of your sight. You've done pretty well for yourself, Jet. You shot up my crew, took my line camp. And now you'd like to take Alice away from me. That's right, Major. Judy. Wait, Jet. You've caused that girl trouble enough. Don't go after her unless you can forget everything except her. I mean it. I can't stand by while you ruin Judy's life just to fight the Major. mentioned the word love. I was too stupid to realize it. Let me do the talking, Judy. Not now, Jack. I've had just about all I can stand for one night. Look, Judy. I don't know. I, I thought I could hurt the Major if I took his girl away from him. I don't love Alice. I just wanted to get even with her. You don't love anything but revenge. You don't think of anybody but yourself. How do you think Miss Alice felt? Never see you again, Chet Cosgrave. You will, Judy. I'm coming to Ace's funeral. You're not wanted there. We Polsons bury our own dead. I still got a lot of forgetting to do. Get my 
my luggage, please, sir. Sure thing, Miss Olive. We don't have much in common, Miss Alice, but it's sure been nice knowing you. We had a lot in common, Judy. See us! Paul wants you to come home. For another whipping? He says to tell you he's sorry and he needs you to home. Judy, I need you, too. No. I feel the same way as Miss Alice. You and the Major, you'll go on feuding forever. Or until one of you's dead. Me, I'm a Polson. And I've already had enough feuding to last me a lifetime. Boom, my horse is in the stable. Get it, please. Sure enough, sis. No, Jet. You can't blame her for feeling that way. I don't. I blame myself. And the major. I'd like to talk to you, Alice. Goodbye, Linton. Goodbye. This senseless feud you're waging with your You call protecting the Circle C senseless? You're not protecting it. You're both destroying it. I'm going home, Linton. That's easy as that. You just walk out on the man you promised to marry. Found out you're not the man I promised to marry. Drive on, Sam. Sure thing. Judy, if you're awake. I've had enough of you, Chet. Let's see how fast you can go for that gun. Don't fight him, Jet. There's nobody can outshoot Major Cosgrave. Maybe another Cosgrave can. Turn around, Jet. Is that the way you win all your gunfights, Major? Put somebody at a man's back? Stay out of this, Prince. Not this time, Major. I'm through doing things your way. What, are you going to turn around or do you want in the back? I'll count to three. Counts for you, too, Major. Give me fires, I'm taking you with me. One, two. Thanks, Boone. That wasn't for you, that was for Asa. Shoot him again, Jet. Shoot him again. When he's dead, you'll get the Circle C by natural rights of inheritance. Just the way you wanted it, Colonel. I don't want it that much. Not enough to kill a man in cold blood. I guess my own blood's nothing but ice water ever since the Major took a pistol to me. He took the circus away from you, Jack. Shut up, Devlin. You've lost your mind. Yes, I've lost my mind. Tell him about the will you had forged. Go on, tell him. Tell him. all along, Jet. I was the one that was wrong for not believing in you. No, Judy. I've been plenty wrong myself. Sometimes you want something so bad, you fight the last ditch for it. When you win, you wish you could have done it without hurting people. Yeah, but sometimes you can't help it. Besides, you can't change what's past. But we can change the future. People in the valley won't have to be afraid anymore. And I think we can live without gunfights. raise our families proper. Why don't you say what you mean, Jed Cosgrave? Can't you see it any plainer than that? Much plainer. I sure hope we can still find that preacher. Go get, get him, him Boone. Boone. <laughs> 